My fuel gauge always reads empty, so while I'm replacing the fuel tank with a 23 gallon tank and putting in a new sending unit, I'm gonna troubleshoot my fuel gauge to figure out what's wrong. Welcome back to the garage, the place where we're making your Bronco, your dream Bronco. Uh, if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe. I'm putting out how-to videos for the weekend mechanic and providing some Bronco entertainment for the Bronco community. Today, what I'm talking about is trying to get my fuel gauge to work. I don't know how many times I've been on a, a drive and I look down and it's on empty and I'm like, I really hope that I have gas. Now, a few years ago, I installed the painless wiring harness on my Bronco. So my first check is the fuse box. This is because power comes from the fuse box to the voltage regulator, which we'll talk about later. But looking at this fuse, it looks good. So we're gonna move on. First thing we're gonna do is start at the end of the circuit. Under the Bronco, you wanna check the connection at the sending unit on the back of your fuel tank. Now, like I said, I just swapped my tank for a 23 gallon tank, but you can see on my stock tank, the pigtail's right here. First, you wanna make sure all the wires are in good condition, then make sure that there isn't gunk or buildup in the plug causing a bad connection. The next test is testing the ground running to the sending unit. Usually this ground is mounted to your frame close to the gas tank. And if that's the case, this is probably gonna be your problem. Your frame's old and rusty, and at this point, it doesn't make a good ground for your Bronco, especially at the back of the Bronco. So if you notice that your tail lights are, are having trouble, um, it's likely a grounding issue at the back of your Bronco because your frame is not conducting a good amount of electricity. Now to test this, what I'm gonna do is get a long wire and hook it up to the negative terminal on my battery and connect it to the sending unit and turn the key on and see if my fuel gauge moves. That didn't move my fuel gauge. And if it doesn't work for you either, then your ground may not be the issue. Now the second check while we're under the Bronco is gonna be testing the resistance of our sending unit. Remember, your fuel gauge measures the resistance to the ground while the current passes through the sending unit. Now my sending unit is out of the Bronco, but with it out of the fuel tank, you can see how this works. So right now my float level would be in the full position and you can see I'm getting about nine, 10 ohms reading in the full position. And then as we drop it down, you see that my ohms read up to 75 ohms. And so this means that the sending unit is working for my fuel tank. You can do the same check with your sending unit in your fuel tank. Just make sure that your fuel tank is actually full of gas or partially full. Next, we'll move up to check the resistance of the fuel gauge. I have a new fuel gauge that I got from Tom's Off-Road to show you how this works. I'm gonna put my multimeter on the terminals and turn the multimeter to the ohm setting and it should read between 10 and 18 ohms. My new fuel gauge from Tom's Off-Road is reading at 15.5 ohms. If you get between 10 and 18 ohms, chances are your gauge is good, but I wanna check my gauge under the dash. Under the dash, my fuel gauge is reading 12.5. That's a good bit lower than my new gauge, but obviously it's still good. If you found that your gauge is the problem, I'll put a link in the description below where you can get one of these from Tom's Off-Road. Now, if you're having a problem with your fuel gauge, with your oil pressure gauge, and with your, uh, what's the other one, temp gauge, then most likely it is your voltage regulator. Now, this little guy uh, just sits right back here in the back of the, the gauge cluster. And what it does is it actually takes the 12 volts that's coming off your battery and regulates it because on these classic cars you don't need a full 12 volts to run these gauges so a lot of times what will happen is this guy will go out which then causes 
your gauges to stop working. Now it's super tricky to actually get a camera behind the dash. There's no room back there um, and actually show this. But this is what the gauge cluster looks like from the back. This image is from the painless wiring harness instruction book. And you can see the black and green wire runs power to the voltage regulator. And then the black and white wire comes out of the regulator, spliced, and runs to the fuel gauge, oil gauge, and the temp gauge. But what you want to do is you want to test your voltage regulator. To check that your voltage regulator is pushing 6 volts to the fuel gauge, turn the key on, then hook up your multimeter to the voltage regulator. This should start reading between 4 and 9 volts. If your voltage regulator isn't reading anything with the key on, then this is likely the problem. So this is my voltage regulator and you can see I'm getting maybe six, seven, one, six, one, two, one, two, point four, so if you've gone through this entire process and your fuel gauge still isn't working like mine, uh, well then the last check that I just realized that I hadn't really done was I tested the wire um, from my sending unit to my fuel gauge. Uh, put my multimeter on it, set it to the ohms where it beeps if there is connection, and I got no connection. Now this can happen if, uh, you know, just that wire is running under the, the Bronco and if it rubs on metal and it gets exposed and grounds out or something like that. Um, but if you have installed the painless wiring harness like I have, installed a new gas tank like I did, removed your auxiliary tank, well, with the painless wiring harness has a loop in it that you connect two wires to itself if you don't have the auxiliary tank anymore. And when I installed the painless wiring harness, I had an auxiliary tank and then it started leaking, so I removed it, which is probably when my fuel gauge stopped working. Now I'm not gonna show you what it looks like under the dash, but here's a picture from Painless um, of the instructions in this, that, that orange loop of wires right there. You're supposed to connect those if you aren't running an auxiliary tank. Those were disconnected behind my fuel gauge. And with that, now when you turn on my Bronco or turn the key on, I've actually got a fuel gauge that reads a little bit of fuel but hopefully that helps you guys uh, and if I forgot something or left something out leave it in the comments below if you're looking for more basics on the Bronco check out some of these playlists that I have of just some of the Bronco basics some of the things that you may not know if you've never owned a Bronco before thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time